tits. <laughs> rub this you on. You about rub on your tits. I'll rub it on your tits. You rub it on mine. Jordan, you rolled one, I rolled one. See, that's fair. <laughs> Alright. All right. See, Travis wants to roll one. It feels like a suppository. Just, you're not putting it in my butt. Here. <laughs> rub me. <laughs> not rubbing Just massage it on my booty. Shh, just don't look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. You gotta open your hand. Dude, it's look, rub it in, man. Dude, it's so hairy. <laughs> so? It's, lions are hairy. Mm. Oh. Okay, I'm not gonna make it too weird. Oh. Get in that deep, too, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you got a cup and it going like to me. Like get Here, you come show me. He will. Hey, come show me. Like get it in the That's deep. That's good. Is it? It's like it's not massaged in. Yeah, it's massaged in. Right, you got a lot on there. Get the other one with that. Yeah, okay, you got a lot here. Oh. Can you like transfer some of this one over there? Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's this is what we do. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I feel activated. Sorry, for. What's up, Iron Family? It's Will Corbin with Iron Coming at Gym. Today I'm here with Jordan Bannister. We did a chest today. It turned out pretty good. Pretty decent chest day. We're actually going to let you watch cuts of our chest workout as we do a little bit of talking. Today we're going to discuss being goal-driven, all right? So whatever you do, if you do it with a purpose, you're going to be a lot more efficient at it. So there's power lifters, there's bodybuilders, Whatever your goal is, first you need to figure out a goal, and then you need to attack that goal violently. Today we're going to do a little bit of talking about the difference between bodybuilders and powerlifters. So one of the main differences between powerlifting and bodybuilding is how you train, right? So I would say for bodybuilding, you're training the muscle as opposed to powerlifting the movement, right? Yeah. So powerlifting, if you're training, you don't necessarily train chest, you train bench. You train the bench first, yeah. So everything you do in powerlifting other than bench, when you're training bench is an accessory. Vice versa, if you're doing bodybuilding, you're not necessarily training bench. You don't give a shit about what your bench is. You're training more chest. The goal is to train to make the biggest chest you can make versus the strongest bench you can make. And yeah, another thing, I would definitely say technique has everything to do with it. Yeah. If uh, Again, if you're bodybuilding versus powerlifting, the technique's going to be totally different. Again, you're, gonna, you're training the muscle versus the movement. In powerlifting, if you want your numbers to go up, you need to be one of the best bench pressers you can be. So the better bench pressure you are, the more weight you're going to be able to push up on the bench. The better your technique, the tighter your form, the more correct everything is, the better bench pressure you're going to be. As opposed to bodybuilding, the technique is to throw that bitch up the best you can, force blood in it, and shit like that. So muscle versus movement, that's what you're training. Let's talk about rep ranges. Everybody's going to have their own personal opinion about how many reps you should do for whatever the hell it is you're doing. So before you even start typing at the bottom and telling us how you feel about it, this is just our personal opinion on the rep ranges. I would say bodybuilding, if I'm trying to make the best chest I can make, I'm going to do at least 10 to 15 reps to try to get as much blood forced into that thing, get the biggest, best pump I can get, as opposed to powerlifting. What do you say? We're training mainly speed off the chest, how fast you can react to the bar, being on your chest, getting it up, straight bar path A to B, and usually three to five reps, depending on what like training cycle you're in. So heavy reps. Like I, five, I, have, I have usually four different cycles. I get my off-season training, then a meat prep, yep. and then a few weeks before the meet, maybe two. I'll do my just one rep. Heavy single five. openers, yeah. Heavy, yep. then, okay. then you have your deloads and all that. Right? Again, everybody has their own opinion of how many reps they should be doing for whatever. In my opinion, if you're building a, a good physique, you're going to want to do enough reps to make that muscle burn. You're going to want to do time under tension. You're going to want to rip and shred the muscle. And if you're going to get in the power lift, you need to do as much weight as you can, as many times as you can, three to five reps. Usually using the right amount of percentage for that given workout. Perfect. Um, you perfect. can't be going max effort all the time. Now we're going to go on to diet, bodybuilding diet, power lifting diet. Again, two different destinations, two different paths you got to take to get there. I would say that bodybuilding is a lot more strict dieting, like when to eat, what to eat, and, and, and more controlling what you eat as opposed to powerlifting you're not just eating as much as you can whatever you want you still need to have a little restriction powerlifting is a lot of timing with your foods when to time the correct amount of carbs before you lift when to get that protein in your intra shakes and post-workout shakes post-workout meals basically stuff just mainly to give you energy and keep your body going not necessarily just to make you look the best it's just just to keep you going to where you can move the most amount of weight you can. absolutely so you pretty much say that the diet for powerlifting is it's, it's all for the lift. So you're dieting to make yourself the strongest yeah. and uh, pretty much like you're eating for energy and you're eating for recovery. Yeah. Is that what you say? Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah so you can recover the best. Yeah. So, you're eat, so literally your diet is for the workout. 
Yeah. I would say on both as well, you know, just like bodybuilding, you want to go into a good uh, workout, you know, with enough carbs, enough energy to fucking get you all the way through. And then as soon as you're done with powerlifting or bodybuilding, you definitely want to get, get some good food in to help recover and boost all the muscle growth because, hell, no muscles are built in the gym. You actually, you're breaking down muscles and tearing them down in the gym as opposed to when you finish. Then you get the food down, then you get to eat, then you get your muscles to recover. Yeah. Each individual has their own needs. Like it, It's way too broad of a spectrum for me to say, hey, you watching this right now, you should take in X amount of calories with X amount of carbs with X amount of protein. Like It's way too general. You need to do a little bit of research and figure out exactly like how much you weigh. There's all kind of calculations. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get a video going a little bit later that breaks down a lot more into detail as far as like the calories, the carbs, and all the good stuff, like the macros, what they are, why they are, why you need them, what they do, all the good stuff like that. So the spectrum's way too wide to just give you a very broad and general numbers that you should go by right now. It all depends on how much you weigh now, what your goals are. Again, it's goal-driven. If you're wanting to be the best powerlifter you can be, your diet needs to fucking reflect. So if you're wanting to be the biggest bodybuilder you can be, your diet needs to reflect. So every meal you eat needs to be goal-driven. Everything you eat, should affect your lift and your like goals. Oh. All right, so we're gonna barely, barely skate over the surface of supplements. I know everybody is real weird and different about supplements, so uh, uh, let's just start off the word supplement. A supplement by definition, and it's an add-on, it's yeah. an addition, so it's not to yeah. be in place of. So a lot of guys are like, oh, I'm gonna replace this meal with a protein shake. Yeah, that's good. You got your protein in, but you didn't get anything else with that fucking meal offered. It's a supplement, not a replacement. The main thing is here, don't replace food with supplements. Supplement food with supplements. They are not to replace. They are to add on and to assist. But before you get down to the supplements, you need to make sure that your diet's right. You need to make sure that your workout's right. Make sure you're getting in all the macros that you need. Make sure that you're, you're working out the right way. And make sure you're actually getting enough rest, too, because without proper workout, without proper diet, without proper rest, it doesn't matter what the hell you take. You're not going to get them supplements aren't going to help you with the shit if all the other things aren't lined up. So again, goal driven. Be goal driven. We're going to talk about frequency, which is pretty much how many days a week you should train. Let's talk about frequency as a power up. Tell us a little about it. If you bench three days a week and you squat three days a week, even though you can do like a bench squat, bench squat, bench squat, it's still when you squat, you're still putting pressure on the triceps, the front delts, the rear delts and you're not recovering properly from the bench session the day before. Usually I would do frequency three to five days a week in powerlifting, a heavy bench day. Then the following day I'll do a heavy squat. Following day I'll do a speed deadlift mm -hmm. and then some accessories. Then I'll take a day or two off and do another bench press session. And then the next squat session I'll throw in deadlifts again. And that's usually my whole week of training. As far as a bodybuilder, I would say the frequency training and a bodybuilder, you need to train at least five times a week, I'd say. You don't really need quite as much recovery time with bodybuilding as you would powerlifting. You're not really taxing your central nervous system, per se, as far as you would powerlifting. Sometimes after you get done with a heavy powerlifting day, you feel like you got the fucking flu. Yeah. Intense bodybuilding day, you could just barely move your fucking muscles, you know, so it just, powerlifting drains you from the inside out. Let's go on into rest since we're talking about frequency. Resting, let's talk about rest for a second. Rest doesn't necessarily mean you're just taking a fucking day off. Uh, on your rest days, you're still pounding fucking food. Yeah. You're still shoveling shit down your throat. You're still doing. You're fucking resting, right? Would you My say? rest day is eating and sleeping. That's it. Keep the heart rate down. And rest. That's what a rest is. You're, you're not taxing any muscle. You're not tearing anything down. But you're shoveling food yeah. still. Personally, I say that your rest days should be planned. You shouldn't just say, "Hey, I'm not really feeling the gym day, so no. I'm going to take a rest day," because. If you just take an unplanned rest day, then the next unplanned rest day is going to be easier to hit, or miss rather. Yeah. Stay on schedule. Again, if you're goal driven, you're goal driven. You have a schedule, you have a plan of attack, and you're attacking violently. If you're not consistent with shit, you're never going to get anywhere. Let's say you're trying to gain weight, and you're shoveling food down your throat, you shovel it for five days straight. Well, on that sixth day, you're like, ah, oh, fuck this, I'm taking, I ain't shoveling today. Well, you just lost five days of shoveling right there, because your body you know, you, you just want to be consistent. Stay consistent with whatever the fuck it is you're doing. You're never going to get there unless you're driving hard. Same thing with strength. Strength goes away faster than it fucking comes. If you're not consistent with it, you'll lose the shit faster than you get the shit. All right, we're going to finish this video with safety. Be brave, not stupid. If you know there's no way in hell you can 
bench press, fucking whatever the weight is, don't get under it. Don't be a dumbass. You, you can be brave as hell and get under the bar and then fucking die. Attack what you know you can attack. If your bench press is 225, don't get under 405 and try that shit. That's idiotic. You're never going to get there. Be slow, be steady, be safe. If you hurt yourself being a dumbass, then you're never going to get your goals. You're going to push everything back further and further and further. Do you have a spotter? Not just anybody to get the weight off of you. Uh, you want to have somebody that knows how to spot because a terrible spotter could also lead to a terrible injury. So be safe, be tight, have proper form, don't be a dumbass, don't end up on some other gym fuckery video. Also, make sure that. you like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram. We're at Iron Covenant SC. Uh, we've got some pretty good stuff on there. We're constantly doing stories, constantly posting pictures, trying to keep everybody up to date on there. This is Jordan. His Instagram handle is AbsoluteUnit864. We're going to put his information down below. Make sure you give him a like or a follow on Instagram. And make sure you follow Austin. Uh, he's at the Audi. We're going to put his information down below too. You don't really see him a lot because he's the man behind the camera. But without him, I mean, hell, you wouldn't be watching us right now. So he's about to put in mad hours editing this video and taking the time to make this look right. So make sure you show some love. Follow all of them. Follow Iron Covenant SC. Stay tuned.